Okay, so let's do this symbolic review sheet dealio. First of all, if you have the version that tells you to memorize capital G and capital K, don't. You don't need to do that. We do not make people do that, it turns out. So, um, let's go on to the problems. And if you need those constants on the test, you will be given them. So, do not worry. So, for the first problem, we have this body, uh, which has mass little m, and that is revolving around some other body, some much bigger body, that has, uh, let's make that, there we go, that has a mass of big M, and has a circular orbit with radius capital R. So let's go ahead and do that. And, uh, yeah, that should be about it. So that's all we need to write down here. So, um, part A, they want us to find, or I want us to find, because I wrote this, the period of the orbit. So, um, this is basically a standard um, uniform circular motion problem, gravity problem type thing. So uh, we have an object moving in a circle. There must be some force that keeps it moving in this circle, because otherwise Newton's first law says it would just zip off in a straight line at constant speed, which it doesn't do. And the reason why is because it's affected by gravity. So gravity is providing the centripetal force here. So um, our equation for centripetal acceleration is A equals V squared over R. And in this case, actually, R is the capital R, which is the raise the orbit. Um, and of course, we have our, our tried and true um, V equals 2 pi R over T equation for converting from velocity and radius to period and radius. Um, this is just distance traveled over time. And of course, we all know that this means um, A, let's see, this makes it so that A equals 4 pi squared R over t squared. So um, let's multiply that by m to find the force because f equals ma, right? So we multiply by m here. I want to multiply by m over here. And that is the, so this is the centripetal force necessary to keep it in the circular orbit with the radius r and period t. And we want to find out um, what, you know, well, we want to set that equal to gravity because gravity is what's providing us. So this is our universal gravitation equation between the body with mass big M, the body with mass little m. Center is located a distance capital R apart. G is, of course, our constant there. So at this point, um, it becomes a, you know, a little cancellation banquet here. And what we get is taking this whole thing here, cancel little m's, we get that, uh, let's see, so how do we want to do this? 4 pi squared r cubed, so I'm bringing the r squared here up to the top, over t squared equals big G times capital M. And quite simply, what, hap what this tells us, let's see if we want to find T, so let's go and do this and do T squared equals four pi squared R cubed over big G, big M. And, you know, I mean, if you really want to write that with a square root, you can go ahead, but that is the answer for part A. So that's part A. Um, part B asks us to find the speed of the orbiting body. So V is uh, 2 pi over T. So what's our fastest way to do that? Let's see. Um, probably just to take, um, well, you can take, ew, I don't know. Let's see. So let's do um, MA equals V squared over R. Let's see. Boop, 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 boop. So probably the easiest way to do that is just say um, MA equals m v squared over r, and this is the force here again, f equals ma, and that is going to equal g, like we said before, big M, little m, over big R squared, and this is also big R. So um, this is looking a little, you know, a little cramped, but um, it should be fallible. So we cross out the m's here, and what we get is v squared. Um, we can cancel an r here with an r here, so V squared equals G capital M over R squared. And no, I'm sorry, just over R, no square. And so that means, of course, that the speed in our orbit is simply square root of G times capital M over R. Couldn't be simpler. Okay, and there's B. Okay, C, the potential energy of the system. Well, that is, um, if possible, even easier than the part we just did because we simply plug in our potential energy equation. So that is U equals negative capital G, big M, little m, over R. 
And uh, quite frankly, that right there is our answer. There is nothing more to be done. Okay, for part D, well, I'll just take a different color for D. Okay, for D, we want to know the kinetic energy of the orbiting body. So you may remember what this is. You may remember the very easy way to find this, but I'm going to do the slightly harder way. Well, actually, I'm going to do fine. We've got V right there. We've got V squared equals G big M over R. So let's take um, kinetic energy equals one half little m times v squared, because it's this little body with little m, and we're at speed squared, so, you know, blah, blah, blah. And v squared is g big m over r. So this is going to equal, ek is going to be one half uh, the g big m over r, and then multiply by the little m. So g big m little m over capital R. And now, wow, how easy is this going to be? Um, this is actually just negative one half of u. So this is literally our answer here, and it's also equal to negative one-half of u. And this holds for any circular orbit. Remember that um, the kinetic energy is going to be negative one-half of potential energy in a circular orbit. Okay, and finally, last but not least, uh, what's the color we haven't used yet? Let's go with this green color. So for part E, we want to find total mechanical energy, and that is very easily found because E mech is simply uh, the potential energy plus the kinetic energy. And this is, um, well, this is equal to U, um, and then kinetic energy, you know, potential energy is still equal to potential energy, obviously. Kinetic energy is negative one half of U, so E mech simply equals one half of U. And over here, um, you know, we know that, and that's also um, the negative of kinetic energy. So what's important to understand about energy in a um, you know in a circular orbit system is let's say let's say right here. So this is our little plot of energy, sort of our one-dimensional thing for energy. So this dotted line represents zero, and so if you are in a circular orbit, your potential energy for gravity is always negative using you know our usual. Um, using our usual uh, convention. So this is U, it's a negative number. Um, and then your kinetic energy, um, and I'm going to start kinetic energy from where U took us down to. So like imagine this is zero here, and then we're getting negative, negative, negative. Okay, this, so this is U. Kinetic energy takes us back up halfway. Okay, so kinetic energy is positive. And what that means then is that our total mechanical energy is U plus EK. So it's this negative number but then you get half of it back positively. And so that right there in the green is E mech. Hopefully that's still visible on your screen. So that's the idea, um, and that's the answer to that first problem on gravitation.